really important to keep the healing process in mind when you think about treating your hamstring strain or a hamstring strain. So what happens is, day of injury, you pull the hamstring. You actually torn some of the muscle fibers in there. So even if it's a very mild strain, you've still torn a few of the muscle fibers or the, or the muscle cells. If you've got a severe strain, you've torn quite a significant portion of them. Now, the first thing that has to happen is that that broken cells, the, the debris of the injury, has to be taken away so that the new ones can form. And what happens is, because you've got bleeding in there, a clot forms. Um, so think of it as an internal scab, nearly, of that area. And you have loads of little inflammatory cells that comes in, and inflammation is the way that the body get rid, gets rid of the debris. So the inflammatory cells absorbs all the broken cells. And that's why inflammation is actually a really important part of the healing process. And you shouldn't be taking anti-inflammatory medication within the first three days, three to five days of sustaining a muscle injury. There is some research out there to show that if you heavily suppress the inflammatory phase with anti-inflammatories during that first period, you can actually slow down your healing process or make it suboptimal healing. Um, on that note, people always ask me about, what about ice? Because ice also decreases inflammation. Ice has a very short action when it works. And ice also, in the acute phase, you use it more to stop the bleeding because if you get excessive bleeding, you can actually get more damage. So you don't apply ice for hours on end, where anti-inflammatories is in your blood for six to eight hours. So there's a big difference between the two. It's safe, a lot safer to use ice for stopping the bleeding and stuff and limiting the extent of your injury. Um, but try to stay away from anti-inflammatories. If it's really, really painful, um, maybe ask your doc if you can use paracetamol or something like that instead, because it's not an anti-inflammatory action. But that's enough about that now. Okay, so you've got your inflammatory phase for the first three to five days. And during that phase, they're just cleaning up the building site, basically. And the blood clot forms in there, and that blood clot's going to act as scaffolding for the new cells to come and attach to. So during that phase, you can imagine that this injury site is quite sensitive. Um, so if you're going to overstretch it, or you're going to be too rigorous and try to really strengthen it up in that first period, you're just going to injure it because it's pretty weak at that point. Now, how long this inflammatory phase lasts for really depends on how big an uh, injury you've got. So if it's a mild strain that you could continue jogging with lightly or pretty much walk as normal afterwards, it'll only be a day or so. But if it's one with uh, makes you limp and five days later you're still struggling to move, it can last five days or so. Okay, so then after that, after day three to five, your body starts forming new cells and these cells come and attach to that scaffold in there, the blood clot. Um, and But these cells are not strong yet and they are not orientated in the correct way because when we think about the, the cells in the muscle, they've got to be aligned parallel in the direction of force where they're going to work. That's what makes them strong. So now they are kind of being laid down as spaghetti and that's a scar tissue for you. But now if you tension that scar tissue carefully, to show it in which direction you want it. So for instance, imagine this is my leg and this is my hamstring. If I say to it, come on, I'm just moving my leg gently in this direction. So we're putting the muscle under a little bit of strain there. It's telling the muscle fibers to align in the direction that you want to use them. And that's how you create a strong scar. So from day three, to five new cells form for about three weeks that process takes and loads of new cells um, are created in the area but also the third phase is remodeling getting them aligned in the right direction that you want them getting them strong enough for what you want them to do and that remodeling phase can last anything from a few weeks to a few months depending on how bad your injury was again and during the remodeling phase that's where rehab really is important because you're aligning the cells in the direction you want them to be. But you also think of them as little skinny things that's formed at first. And then the progressive rehab program, every time you do an exercise that's a tiny bit harder than what it's used to, but not too hard, the body goes, oh, you actually want them to be stronger. And it rebuilds them fatter and stronger and it can cope better. And then as soon as you're used to that level of rehab, we up the rehab a tiny bit. And the body goes, oh, you actually want them to have better endurance and be a bit stronger still. And it makes it stronger.
So that's the process. Why it's important to have a progressive rehab program, where you start with very gentle exercises, sometimes just range of movement, getting it going, and eventually ending with quite strong things, because you can't go from doing nothing to strong. That's why rest doesn't work, because you need this bit in the middle to slowly and progressively strengthen those new cells that's being formed.